The day is finally here. Canada's biggest bank, RBC, is now bearish on housing. You would have never thought the day would come, but we'll be talking about in this video how we got here. We'll be discussing just how much they could anticipate the housing market to come down. And we'll also be discussing which areas of Canada will be impacted the most. But if this is your first time here, my name's Nick. Welcome to Ways to Wealth. Before we get into the video, I have a huge favor, a huge ask. If you learn some new or you get some value out of the video, hit that like button for me. I definitely appreciate that. And if you haven't already, please consider hitting the subscribe button and turning the notification bell on. We release content like this every single Sunday. So don't forget to stop by and check out what is going on in the market, especially if you like topics like this and with no further ado we'll get right into the report that was released on friday by arby's talking about how this historic correction is going to impact canadians and their housing we'll start out by saying it was only a few quarters ago in q1 that rbc had predicted a growth expectation of four percent for the canadian real estate market so to see them turn bearish, uh, the first place to start is kind of what's happening right now. And it's a topic that we've been discussing many a times before. And that's the fact that we're in a rising rate environment. Interest rates are going higher. And what effectively is, is happening is that mortgage rates are following as well. So let's read a little bit about you know what we had just kind of discussed. So Canada is front loading its rate hike campaign. In the most recent report, if you haven't seen the video, I'll link it above. The Bank of Canada moved 1% higher on the interest rate, which is something that is very, very uncommon and just speaks to how uh, the bank is trying to get ahead of its inflation problem, um, which, you know, obviously there's a lot of debate there, but we'll leave it be. So where does the Bank of Canada expect to be over the long run? Well, a lot of people are anticipating that they're going to be slightly above neutral. Tiff Macklem has said it himself, but about 3.25% on the overnight rate, which obviously will get a, an indication here of where the fixed rate mortgage could be in turn. So we can see what the RBC is predicting here is a fixed rate mortgage at about 4.2%. That's obviously at the beginning of uh, 2022. We know from previous videos that that's about 4.7, probably for your lower end banks, probably above that 5% on a five-year fixed mortgage. Now, what is funny and what is interesting to note is the yellow line is what the um, Government of Canada bond yield is. We talked about how the bank set the five-year fixed mortgage. I'll link that above if you haven't seen it. But the five-year government bond is definitely very important. They actually predicted going down. So this may uh, see mortgage rates coming down in the near term, especially over the next couple of years, maybe not in 2022, but as early as 2023. So that is definitely something to keep an eye on. We also have the variable rate mortgage here. And we can see the forecast uh, for the variable rate and then also in turn what the Bank of Canada overnight rate is. So we see that they have, you know, increased this overnight rate. We've seen, we've covered this in videos many times before. Again, interesting to note a decrease as early as, you know, just before 2024. So just keep that in the back of our minds and um, just note that, you know, what these economists are saying is, there's only so much our economy can take. So affordability is getting crushed. Right now, we can take a look at this chart and we can see the higher end of it is less affordable to own a home. On the other side, it is more affordable. And what the bank is forecasting is that as of October 2022, 58% of your income will go towards your mortgage. We've talked about this as well in previous videos about being house poor. How does the economy work when a majority of your pay is going towards your house? You're forever indebted into your house. It is not a pretty situation for Canada moving forward. So we have huge housing affordability problems already right now, especially with higher prices. 
and with mortgage rates moving higher and effectively making it harder on the stress test. So what they say is with all of these different things in combination, we have a historic correction underway. They're going to factor in uh, that we're going to see home sales fall another 17% from here. They say that they've already dropped 19% in Q2 and 13% in 2021. That's how they get to the 42% number for this year. Now that is just home sales. So if homes aren't selling and people need to get them to move, they'll obviously drop the price of the home. So with home sales coming uh, down, we should effectively see prices coming down. So this projected price drop would surpass prior corrections here. What we can see is the size of the correction is likely to be larger for other price measures. The average prices of homes sold in Canada, for example, could tumble by 17% or more. And that's on a quarterly basis, in part due to a shift of the composition of sales toward lower price markets and housing categories as buyers seek more affordable options. The average home price is already down 8.6% today, and that is definitely where we're at. But when you look at it from an overall general picture, what is 17% lower look like? What does that look like in the grand scheme of things? It's not too much higher from where we were maybe in 2017, 2018. So it will be interesting to see housing prices come down and make it more affordable, which I'm sure a lot of people will rejoice because there is a bubble here regardless of what your thoughts on the nature are. But we're going to talk about which markets are going to be hit the hardest. And I think that's pretty evident. It's BC and it's Ontario. It's obviously the two places that have felt the benefit of this housing bubble the most. And we'll talk a little bit about just how much impact they could feel. So our forecast has home sales in BC and Ontario cumulatively sagging 45 and 38 percent respectively in 2022 and 2023. So when you look at uh, the magnitude of the downturn that would rival the early 90s in Ontario when resales fell 41% and prices 15. This is also um, compared to BC in the 1980s when resales slumped 62% and prices 27%. So there's no doubt when you look at it from a grand scheme of things, we have uh, a rising interest rate environment, which is not good for home sales. We have a potential where people will not be able to afford the mortgages, especially if they went variable, which is where a lot of the new mortgages went just to be able to buy homes. Uh, and then when you look at it from a regional perspective, Ontario and BC have a lot of room to come down, especially when your average home price in is over a million dollars. So, you know, RBC finishes it up with it's a correction, not a collapse. And I think that kind of goes with our point of saying, hey, listen, we know 17% may seem like a lot, but when we look at only four or five years ago, uh, we've gone up maybe 40 or 50%. So we'll still be, you know, relatively high, but definitely due for a correction. Now, one of the other things that I wanted to just take a look at is uh, House Sigma. I don't know if you're familiar with this site, but it does collect data from realtor.ca. It would show you. Uh, deals that are on the market, what they've sold for previously, some pictures into it, etc. It's definitely been my preferred platform to go and, and check out the real estate market. What I have on the screen here is I have deals that have been terminated in 30 days. Now, I'm not saying all of these haven't sold. They could have been terminated and then resold at a different price. But for the most part, if we do go and check uh, some of these deals out, we do see that they have been terminated for good. A lot of houses that were on the market have come off. And what that means is people have been sitting on the market for longer than expected. Previously, we saw deals move in like less than 24 hours. Now we're seeing 15 days, 24 days, 30 days of houses sitting on the market, which is not normal, um, especially if you look at the past three uh, years or so. Um, but there are a lot more instances of deals being terminated. And I think that is something to watch out for, especially when they predict 
home resales to drop by 40 percent i think we're already well on our way there let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments i know the canadian housing market is due for a correction but do you see a correction or do you see a collapse i hope you're uh, enjoying the video so far if you're still here with me hit that like button i appreciate all your support have a great week in the markets happy trading